Doctrine and Covenants, Section 59. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet in Zion, Jackson County, Missouri, August 7th, 1831. Preceding this revelation, the land was consecrated as the Lord had directed, and the site for the future temple was dedicated. On the day this revelation was received, Polly Knight, the wife of Joseph Knight Sr., died, the first church member to die in Zion. Early members characterized this revelation as instructing the saints how to keep the Sabbath and how to fast and pray. The faithful saints in Zion will be blessed. They are to love and serve the Lord and keep His commandments. By keeping the Lord's day holy, the saints are blessed temporally and spiritually. The righteous are promised peace in this world and eternal life in the world to come. Behold, blessed, saith the Lord, are they who have come up into this land with an eye single to my glory, according to my commandments. For those that live shall inherit the earth, and those that die shall rest from all their labors, and their work shall follow them, and they shall receive a crown in the mansions of my Father, which I have prepared for them. Yea, blessed are they, whose feet stand upon the land of Zion, who have obeyed my gospel, for they shall receive for their reward the good things of the earth, and it shall bring forth in its strength. And they shall also be crowned with blessings from above, yea, and with commandments not a few, and with revelations in their time, they that are faithful and diligent before me. Wherefore, I give unto them a commandment, saying thus, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy might, mind, and strength. And in the name of Jesus Christ thou shalt serve him. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt not steal, neither commit adultery, nor kill, nor do anything like unto it. Thou shalt thank the Lord thy God in all things. Thou shalt offer a sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in righteousness, even that of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And that thou mayest more fully keep thyself unspotted from the world, thou shalt go to the house of prayer and offer up thy sacraments upon my holy day. For verily this is a day appointed unto you to rest from your labors and to pay thy devotions unto the Most High. Nevertheless, thy vow shall be offered up in righteousness on all days and at all times. But remember that on this, the Lord's day, thou shalt offer thine oblations and thy sacraments unto the Most High, confessing thy sins unto thy brethren and before the Lord. And on this day, thou shalt do none other thing. Only let thy food be prepared with singleness of heart, that thy fasting may be perfect, or in other words, that thy joy may be full. Verily, this is fasting and prayer, or in other words, rejoicing in prayer. And inasmuch as you do these things with thanksgiving, with cheerful hearts and countenances, not with much laughter, for this is sin, but with a glad heart and a cheerful countenance, verily I say that inasmuch as you do this, the fullness of the earth is yours. The beasts of the field and the fowls of the air, and that which climbeth upon the trees and walketh upon the earth, Yea, and the herb, and the good things which come of the earth, whether for food, or for raiment, or for houses, or for barns, or for orchards, or for gardens, or for vineyards. Yea, all things which come of the earth, in the season thereof, are made for the benefit and the use of man, both to please the eye and to gladden the heart. Yea, for food and for raiment, for taste and for smell, to strengthen the body and to enliven the soul. And it pleaseth God that he hath given all these things unto man. For unto this end were they made to be used with judgment, not to excess, neither by extortion. And in nothing doth man offend God, or against none is his wrath kindled, save those who confess not his hand in all things, and obey not his commandments. But behold, this is according to the law and the prophets, wherefore trouble me no more concerning this matter. But learn that he who doeth the works of righteousness shall receive his reward, even peace in this world, and eternal life in the world to come. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and the Spirit beareth record. Amen. Section 60 Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet in Independence, Jackson County, Missouri, August 8, 1831. On this occasion, the elders who had traveled to Jackson County and participated in the dedication of the land and the temple site desired to know what they were to do. The elders are to preach the gospel in the congregations of the wicked. They should not idle away their time, nor bury their talents. They may wash their feet as a testimony against these, against those who reject the gospel. Behold, thus saith the Lord unto the elders of this church, who are to return speedily to the land from whence they came. Behold, it pleaseth me that you have come up hither. But with some I am not well pleased. 
for they will not open their mouths, but they hide the talent which I have given unto them because of the fear of man. Woe unto such, for mine anger is kindled against them, and it shall come to pass, if they are not more faithful unto me, it shall be taken away, even that which they have. For I, the Lord, rule in the heavens above and among the armies of the earth, and in the day when I shall make up my jewels, all men shall know what it is that bespeaketh the power of God. But verily, I will speak unto you concerning your journey and to the land from whence you came. Let there be a craft made or bought, as seemeth you good, it mattereth not unto me. And take your journey speedily for the place which is called St. Louis. And from thence let my servants, Sidney Rigdon, Joseph Smith Jr., and Oliver Cowdery, take their journey for Cincinnati. And in this place let them lift up their voice and declare my word with loud voices without wrath or doubting, lifting up holy hands upon them, for I am able to make you holy, and your sins are forgiven you. And let the residue take their journey from St. Louis, two by two, and preach the word not in haste among the congregations of the wicked, until they returned the churches from whence they came. And all this for the good of the churches, for this intent have I sent them. And let my servant Edward Partridge, and part of the money which I have given him, a portion unto mine elders who are commanded to return, and he that is able, let him return it by the way of the agent, and he that is not, of him it is not required. And now I speak of the residue who are to come unto this land. Behold, they have been sent to preach my gospel among the congregations of the wicked. Wherefore I give unto them a commandment, thus, thus, thou shalt not idle away thy time, neither shalt thou bury thy talent, that it may not be known. And after thou hast come up into the land of Zion, and hast proclaimed my word, Thou shalt speedily return, proclaiming my word among the congregations of the wicked, not in haste, neither in wrath, nor with strife. And shake off the dust of thy feet against those who receive thee not, not in their presence, lest thou provoke them, but in secret. And wash thy feet as a testimony against them in the day of judgment. Behold, this is sufficient for you, and the will of him who hath sent you. And by the mouth of my servant Joseph Smith, Jr., it shall be made known concerning Sidney Rigdon and Oliver Cowdery, the residue hereafter. Even so. Amen. Section 61. Revelation given through Joseph Smith, the prophet, on the bank of the Missouri River, McQuain's Bend, August 12, 1831. On their return trip to Kirtland, the prophet and ten elders had traveled down the Missouri River in canoes. On the third day of the journey, many dangers were experienced. Elder William W. Phelps, in a daylight vision, saw the destroyer riding in power upon the face of the waters. The Lord has decreed many destructions upon the waters. The waters were cursed by John, and the destroyer rides upon their face. Some have power to command the waters. Elders are to journey two by two and preach the gospel. They are to prepare for the coming of the Son of Man. Behold and hearken unto the voice of him who has all power, who is from everlasting to everlasting, even Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Behold, verily thus saith the Lord unto you, O ye elders of my church, who are assembled upon this spot, whose sins are now forgiven you, for I, the Lord, forgive sins, and am merciful unto those who confess their sins with humble hearts. But verily I say unto you, that it is not needful for this whole company of mine elders to be moving swiftly upon the waters, whilst the inhabitants of either side are perishing in unbelief. Nevertheless, I suffered it, that ye might bear record, Behold, there are many dangers upon the waters, and more especially hereafter. For I, the Lord, have decreed in mine anger many destructions upon the waters, yea, and especially upon these waters. Nevertheless, all flesh is in mine hand, and he that is faithful among you shall not perish by the waters. Wherefore, it is expedient that my servant Sidney Gilbert and my servant William W. Phelps be in haste upon their errand and mission. Nevertheless, I would not suffer that ye should part until ye were chastened for all your sins, that ye might be one, that ye might not perish in wickedness. But now, verily I say, it behooveth me that ye should part. Wherefore, let my servants Sidney Gilbert and William W. Phelps take their former company, and let them take their journey in haste, that they may fill their mission, and through faith they shall overcome. And inasmuch as they are faithful, they shall be preserved, and the Lord will be with them and let the residue take that which is needful for clothing. Let my servant Sidney Gilbert take that which is not needful with him, as you shall agree. And now, behold, for your good, I gave unto you a commandment concerning these things, and I, the Lord, will reason with you as with men in days of old. Behold, I, the Lord, in the beginning, blessed the waters, 
that in the last days, by the mouth of my servant John, I cursed the waters. Wherefore, the days will come that no flesh shall be safe upon the waters, and it shall be said in days to come that none is able to go up to the land of Zion upon the waters, but he that is upright in heart. And as I, the Lord, in the beginning cursed the land, even so in the last days have I blessed it, in its time for the use of my saints, that they may partake the fatness thereof. And now I give unto you a commandment, that what I say unto one, I say unto all, that ye shall forewarn your brethren concerning these waters, that they come not in journeying upon them, lest their faith fail and they are caught in snares. I the Lord have decreed, and the destroyer writeth upon the face thereof, and I revoke not the decree. I the Lord was angry with you yesterday, but today mine anger is turned away. Wherefore, let those concerning whom I have spoken, that should take their journey in haste, again I say unto you, let them take their journey in haste, and it mattereth not unto me after a little, if it so be that they fill their mission, whether they go by water or by land, let this be as it is made known unto them, according to their judgments hereafter. And now concerning my servant Sidney Rigdon, Joseph Smith Jr., and Oliver Cowdery, let them come not again upon the waters, save it be upon the canal, while journeying unto their homes, or in other words, they shall not come upon the waters to journey, save upon the canal. Behold, I the Lord have appointed a way for the journeying of my saints. This is the way, that after they leave the canal, they shall journey by land, inasmuch as they are commanded to go to journey and go up unto the land of Zion. They shall do like unto the children of Israel, pitching their tents by the way. And behold, this commandment ye shall give unto all your brethren. Nevertheless, unto whom is given power to command the waters, unto whom him it is given by the Spirit to know all his ways. Wherefore, let him do as the Spirit of the living God commandeth him, whether upon the land or upon the waters, as it remaineth with me to do hereafter. And unto you is given the course for the saints, or the way for the saints at the camp of the journey of the Lord to journey. And again, verily I say unto you, my servants, Sidney Rigdon, Joseph Smith Jr., and Oliver Cowdery, shall not open their mouths in the congregations of the wicked until they arrive at Cincinnati. And in that place they shall lift up their voices unto God against that people, yea, unto him whose anger is kindled against their wickedness, a people who are well nigh ripened for destruction. And from thence, let them journey for the congregations of their brethren, for their labors even now are wanted more abundantly among them than among the congregations of the wicked. And now, concerning the residue, let them journey and declare the word among the congregations of the wicked, inasmuch as it is given. And inasmuch as they do this, they shall rid their garments, and they shall be spotless before me. And let them journey together, or two by two, as seemeth them good. Only let my servant servant Reynolds Cahoon and my servant Samuel H. Smith, with whom I am well pleased, be not separated until they return to their homes, and this is for a wife's wise purpose in me. And now, verily I say unto you, and what I say unto one, I say unto all, be of good cheer, little children, for I am in your midst, and I have not forsaken you, and inasmuch as you have humbled yourselves before me, the blessings of the kingdom are yours. Gird up your loins, and be watchful, and be sober, looking forth for the second for the, for the coming of the Son of Man. For he cometh in an hour you think not. Pray always that ye enter not into temptation, that ye may abide the day of his coming, whether in life or in death, even so. Amen.